Generation Me are back on television this week, but not in the way that perhaps fans would have liked to have seen them. Generation Me back on TV getting squashed by Matt Morgan, and I think it was ridiculous to do that because the Young Bucks are extremely over with fans, and I'm not quite sure if the TNA office realises that. I know they just probably look at them and think... These guys are just jabronis. I mean, do they actually have fans? But let's be honest, there was a huge groundswell uh, three to six months ago when everybody was talking about these guys. People had seen them on live matches and, you know, all over the place. And they were begging TNA to sign them. Finally, TNA did the right thing. They signed the Young Bucks. But then they renamed them Generation Me. Now, squashing them on television is not the role I think I'd like to see them in. Yeah, fingers crossed it's only for one week because I have to say the name was awful Generation Me as well. I don't know why they didn't just keep the Young Bucks or something in around the Buck Youngs. But uh, either way, I think these guys need to shine and get them up in the title picture because they're absolutely phenomenal and uh, they can really dance the dance. But it was kind of interesting to see them uh, with... Uh, Matt Morgan because just the size difference but they still didn't uh, seem to be bothered and they I think outperformed what I expected even from that match because I didn't know what way it was going to go and um, I was kind of hoping uh, they'd go over but then again um, it's only the week that's in it so with the pay-per-view coming up and stuff maybe it's just uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference to them yeah, now TNA is in an interesting position at the moment. They have 70 performers on the roster. And there were stories in the dirt sheet this week that there are big talent cuts coming next week. i got to worry for the Young Bucks because, like I say, they haven't had a great position. They haven't been on television every week. But then, how many other TNA performers haven't been on television recently? The decisions being made there are very, very confusing. TNA is a fan-driven product. It's not just about uh, the average Joe who tunes into the USA Network because it's channel whatever. It's something that fans have to go and find. TNA isn't in everybody's faces. And like I say, the fan support there is a lot for the Young Bucks. And I hope the office will get that message someday. Now, I hope they're also going to not release them too quickly because they are full of talent they can work like nobody else they almost are like the rockers when they had those coordinated moves and they can do stuff that is just not seen anymore but then again it's not seen anymore for a reason and that's because the office choose not to put that kind of thing on screen yeah it's very true uh, you do have to worry about this talent cut situation as well because so many of those people that they've taken on have been in the last, you know, six months or so. Cer certainly since the, when Hogan and, and these cronies came in. But who gets the cut? The the TNA regulars and the long stairs have been d doing all the work. Like, I know AJ won't get cut, but your, your mainstay, TNA old school stable. Uh, who gets the chop from your ODBs to your J Lethals, right around to your Young Bucks and, uh, you know, your uh, Amazing Reds and your Shannon Moores. 70 people is a lot of people for one show when you think about it and it's a lot of people on a roster so there could be some interesting stories coming out of this week's uh, uh, talent cuts for impact there will certainly be and there have already been a few casualties let's be fair hogan and bischoff are somewhat in power we don't believe they really have all the stroke that perhaps they say they do and indeed eric bischoff this week wow that's a topic we will speak about later i mean bischoff just goes worse and worse he he's just ridiculous what he says on his facebook but in any case i've seen guys now getting released such as the nasty boys and of course sean waltman you would have thought maybe that with bischoff and hogan both of those guys kind of friends with their respective uh, names but they're now gone so let's be honest anyone can go and you've mentioned odb i fear for her position they don't want to push women or girls who are a lot bigger and who are not the kind of our typical 
I suppose, figure that we expect from the Divas. But that's exactly what was incredible about the women's division. So please don't go uh, hell for leather on that women's division. I mean, thinking about this past Thursday's impact, we saw Taylor Wilde and Sarita. We saw the Young Bucks. I mean, were all these guys getting their last chance on television before this big week of releases was coming? Yeah, it's just messy. It's messy, and it must be hard for them to, to get everybody over on TV, especially just having two hours and that many people. And like you say, you do fear for ODB, and you do fear for a lot of the other guys. Um, and then they still sign in new people, and they're you know once somebody gets let go from WWE, who knows what's going to happen with Shelton Benjamin? Will he get taken on? Who gets released from TNA? And, and when does it stop? And then you, there's got to be some. My, I think one of their big problems is uh, kind of talent control. Just because you've been in WWE, it doesn't mean you know that you're going to be the biggest thing. You know, I mean Orlando Jordan. Fair enough, the gimmick is getting over. But your Shannon Moore is when they sign him. I really thought, why do they don't need Shannon Moore? He's just he was never anybody from three can to his stint in WWE. He was never that really over with fans. It'd be like them signing. A Funaki, just because he got to let go, or uh, you know, there's a million and one of those mid card nobodies, really. And not to put them down because I know they're all kind of good workers or whatever, but at the same time, you do have to worry where they, uh, I suppose, quality over quantity is what I'm trying to say. With over 70 people on the roster, cuts have to be made. People have to go. And if you're not considered to be valued to the office, that's it, unfortunately. They're going to do what they can to save money. And I think they have a lot of money to save now. They've certainly had to pay Hogan and Bischoff a fair share. you got to wonder, is Bob Carter funding all this out of his own pocket, I mean, are they coming to him each and every other day saying, can we get a bit more? Somewhere they're going to have to stop. They've done this Monday night thing, and I don't think it was a bad thing. Yes, it's over now, but they put themselves in the faces of viewers who may not have ever bothered. Now, I think every wrestling fan... I would say a large percentage are aware of TNA, whether or not they've ever watched the programme. And to actually give them a chance to see it side by side with Raw was a good move. But now we're going back to Thursdays. Let them cement their position, try and save a bit of money, but just be careful about who you release. I mean, let's think about this. Let's be brutally honest. I mean, speaking about guys just as performers, who would we want to release in a situation like that? Who hasn't been on TV that we presume is still in the company? If I was to start myself, uh, Stone Cold Shark Boy, it's time to go. I'm sure he's had the independent bookings for the last six to eight months. But, I mean, let's be honest, he's never going to do anything else. We, we could see everything he's done just in a few weeks. Who else could I pick that I would uh, like to see released? I mean, that's been really cruel. But, uh, you know, it's got to happen, really. And uh, I certainly would like to see Sarita released, not Taylor Wilde. Uh, I'm sure Sarita is a great worker, but there isn't any position for her. The women's division now in TNA is all about the beautiful people and Angelina Love. Uh, maybe a bit of Daphne in there as well. Yeah, I think Daphne and... Uh, I think Tara's impressed me quite a lot, actually. Um, but that's a ropey, a ropey road from what we hear, too, so... Who knows what's going to happen there. Um, as far as other cuts go, it's very hard to call because um, the likes of uh, Jay Lethal, you know, you, you kind of see him cutting these promos, doing his flair thing, and it's all very funny, I have to say. So cutting somebody like that wouldn't be too good. But then, who do you cut? Will it be your Hernandez, who's uh, a great worker, really, and is solid TNA right back to the LA guns uh, or LAX sorry and uh, the LA guns Jesus Christ LAX and uh, always a solid performer and always delivered in those pay-per-view matches especially the X Division stuff and uh, any of those tag matches a uh, bit of a spot monkey but still great fun to watch and uh, good all around talent but somebody like him getting the cut would just go kind of goes to show would you cut him or would you cut Shannon Moore and just because uh, Jeff Hardy's one of the big players uh, in the company and maybe he's 
you know, putting Shannon over and saying, hey, this is my buddy, you know, Ink Ink is the future. Who knows? But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Fingers crossed they don't cut anybody uh, that we like. 